Hello everybody, welcome back with another video. Today, yes, today we are reacting to how the US stole the Philippines. So, I don't know, I forgot who made this video. Just check it out in the description down below. Or maybe he's gonna say it in the video. But this video is going to be in the description down below. And in the next video, I'm going to post the second part of Kings and Generals Pacific War Part 2 because um, I actually recorded it last night but the problem was it got corrupted so I'm trying to fix the video so yeah like and subscribe everybody I'm gonna start my recording 2000 years later okay so here we go like and subscribe let's let's get let's go <laughs> I'm sorry I just ate. There is a cluster of 7,000 islands that looks like one of the most beautiful places on earth. People have been living here for over 30,000 years, traveling between these islands, trading with each other and with the region, and developing religion, identity, and culture. It eventually became a country called Ma'i. And while all of these advancements were happening here on these islands, another group of humans had been evolving in another part of the world. First of all, Ma'i? The Philippines was called Ma'i? I don't know that. That's good to know. Over here in Europe, Spain. Ah, the Spanish colonizers. Okay, I know it is. Ferdinand and Magellan was killed by Lapu Lapu. <laughs> uh, well, the reason why I always laugh with that because we have fish named Lapu Lapu, and um, so so someone will ask, um, who killed Magellan, and say Lapu Lapu, and who killed Malapu Lapu. A fisherman. <laughs> but this other group had a different culture, a different religion. Many of their advancements were achieved through expansion, not collaboration. Uh. And their religion thrived when they stomped out others. They wanted to conquer. These island these people, this culture, would soon be swallowed, stripped of what made them them. And soon their name would be changed after the name of the king of their conquerors. Oh, King Philip. This isn't a story just about a big, powerful military taking over new land. Oh, so we're named from King Philip II. Oh, Philippines. Philippine Islands. Okay. We know that story pretty well. Mm. The story of these people offers a new perspective to anyone who will listen. Island it's USA. a perspective that has been wiped West. from our history books because of the inherent discomfort and tension with this fact that the United States, once a colony that heroically threw off an empire to become independent, soon became an empire itself. It contradicts our founding belief that it is, quote, self-evident that all men are created equal. And this story isn't just history. That empire still exists today with colonial possessions and subjects. It's all wrapped up in the story of these 7,000 islands and their people. So I want to tell uh. you the story of how the U.S. stole the Philippines. There are still American citizens today who do not have equal voting rights. These are citizens of America's island territory. The U.S. Constitution grants citizenship to everyone born on U.S. soil except in one jurisdiction. Oh, except for the Philippines. I'm alright with that. I'm alright with that. How the U.S. stole the Philippines. The first Quick pause, um, because I want to tell you about something. Okay, I'm going to skip this because it's uh, it kind of. Why is this so long? Okay. It'll get you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp if you want to get started today. So let's get back to the video. Ah. Uh. 
This video could be called How Spain Stole the Philippines, since Spain was the first nation to conquer and control these islands like 500 years ago. Mm. Actually, exactly 500 years ago. And indeed, Spain left a very deep influence on these islands, not least the name itself, yeah. which is named after King Philip. And ca Catholicism, um, Catholics, <laughs> I'm sorry, Roman Catholics. Oh, and Catholicism, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. So yeah, because I just ate lunch and I couldn't pronounce it. So yeah, yeah. It kind of influenced Spain us. brought their religion, their language, their culture, which is why the most common yeah, last language. names in the Philippines are like Reyes or Del Rosario, De La Cruz, Del De Los Santos. No. But the heyday of <laughs> Reyes, <laughs> Rosa, Fox, Fox, um, Juan. The mm. Spanish Empire came and went, and by the 1800s, Juan. it was kind of crumbling. <laughs> But it was the arrival of a new superpower that I believe had a bigger imprint, not just on the Philippines, but on the US itself. It established oh. rules and behaviors that we still grapple with today. And that's mm. why this is the story of how the US stole the Philippines. Mm. So let's go. To this day, we can see the traces of the almost 400 years of Spanish rule over the Philippines. But even more striking is the more recent influence of the United States. Okay, so it's the end of the 1800s. Up until now, US expansion sort of looks like this. It's all happening on this mainland. And at this point, there sort of became a big debate of like, do we keep going? Some people wanted to keep expanding the US outside of this mainland. The president at the time wasn't oh, a big William expansion McKinley. guy, but he was surrounded by people who loved war. <laughs> Simply this guy. Ah, and these <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt or Theodore Roosevelt. Fun fact, he actually got shot while he's doing his speech and he even finished his speech because um he actually has like his notes in like he's wearing like a I forgot what he was wearing like a robe or something I don't know a coat he got shot and the bullet didn't get get deeper in his body it it kind of because um, um because of the p notes it helped like slow down the bullet so yeah that's just a fun fact people who surrounded the president had their eye on this spanish colony right off the american ah, cuba. coast called cuba where the locals were rising up against spain wait a minute isn't this a video about the philippines why are we talking about cuba we're getting there in just a second okay so anyway it's very cuba. important americans didn't want to go to war with cuba they're like we don't need more war but thanks to the explosion of an American submarine in Cuba, which was probably an accident, and thanks to some highly unethical journalism yeah, that blamed the Spanish. explosion on Spain, and a big thanks to, again, this guy, Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt, who at this point was just a peon. He was literally the assistant secretary of the Navy. Uh -huh. But he somehow cajoled his boss's boss, the president of the United States, to go to war in Cuba to like liberate the Cubans from Spain. So the US declared war on Spain in 1898. But this begins a new era of war in the United States. No longer can you just go into war and just like take over land. You need an angle. You need to sell the war to the American people. So the angle on this war was liberation. We are liberating the people. The people you liberate will witness the honorable and decent spirit of the American military. No, 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 that's, that's later. We're talking about 1898. <laughs> oh, it's later, it's later. <laughs> but yes, the whole idea of selling war to the American public didn't really go away after this. Why did the US go to war in Iraq? In the early stages of military operations. So anyway, the US is now at war with Spain which is an empire that is deeply in decline, as I mentioned. It's not gonna be hard to win. But soon, it's not just Cuba. The US, really meaning Teddy Roosevelt, who again is just an assistant secretary of the Navy. Because uh, the reason why um, Spain's empire was kind of um, dismantling itself because, um, because of they're not doing anything. Like, they're not really sending more troops to, their, to the places that that they colonized and yeah that's it that's the reason why the spanish empire collapsed he's like not a big decision maker 
he somehow maneuvers the situation to say like, let's liberate next door Puerto Rico. And while we're at it, let's go into the Pacific and liberate Guam and the Philippines from Spain as well. Teddy didn't even ask his boss to do this. He literally sent off a cable to the Navy commander in Asia that was like, George Dewey, go attack the Philippines where Spain is. That is what your mandate is. And George Dewey's like, okay, I'm being told to go to war with Spain and the Philippines. Teddy was sort of of the mind, like, better to ask forgiveness than permission. I mean, I get that, but kind of nuts that he pulled it off. Anyway, and now because of Teddy Roosevelt, who we literally named the teddy bear after, uh -huh. side note, we are at war not in the Caribbean only, but also in the Pacific. The U.S. arrives to the Philippines and sees that the locals had already been fighting against the Spanish for, like, years. The Philippine Revolution. Um... We have like a phrase, it's actually KKK, but it's not the Ku Klux Klan, it's, like, no, it's not the Ku Klux Klan, no, it's different. It's, it's our, I forgot what, what we call our KKK, but it's actually, I'll just put it, Edit it, Lewis, just edit it here, so yeah, KKK is different in the Philippines to the US back in the day. KKK is like um, white supremacy but in the Philippines KKK is actually because of revolution. Um, I forgot what like the tree K mean. I'm very very sorry I forgot it's been a while since I learned. So yeah I'm just gonna tell you because sometimes people are gonna say Wait, the Ku Klux Klan, the Ku Klux Klan exists in the Philippines? Holy sheesh! <laughs> no, no, it's actually just a revolution flag. The Spanish were weak and were totally declining. So it's like the top of the ninth inning or like the fourth quarter of the Spanish in the Philippines. And the U.S. shows up and is like, let us liberate you. And the Philippines were like, well, we've sort of already been fighting this bloody war for years <laughs> against the Spanish. So yeah, I guess United sure, States, yeah. if you want to come help us deal <laughs> the final blow to Spain, like, sweet. So George Dewey, this Navy commander, and his fleet show up to Manila. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., people are like, wait, weren't we just supposed to invade Cuba? What are we doing in the Philippines now? <laughs> Yo, I don't know what happened. <laughs> The U.S. government's like, because the Philippines is a perfect hub for commercial opportunities in Asia, and we think that if we don't take it, Japan or Germany might take it, which would clearly diminish our geostrategic advantage in the Pacific. No, they didn't say that. They said, we want to, to liberate. liberate the people <laughs> the of liberate. the Philippines. <laughs> liberate. The, the people you liberate will witness no, the not that, not that, not that. spirit not that, bro. of the American military. So the Spanish not, see the not U.S. That arrive to the Philippines and they're like, great, we're done. Nah, that's like the future. So the Spanish military commanders ask to meet with the U.S. military commanders. They meet in secret and Spain's like, listen, I know we're losing, but we really want to save some face here. We don't want it to look like we lost to the Filipino revolutionaries. And I'm not kidding. The Spanish commander literally said that he would, quote, be willing to surrender to white people, but not to the Filipinos. Ah. So the U.S. commander's like, okay, there's an opportunity. Wow, racist. <laughs> we said we were here to liberate the Filipinos, but we haven't promised anything yet. So we would much rather it look like the U.S. defeated Spain instead of helped the Filipinos defeat Spain. Much better for our brand, says the United States. So together, the United States and Spanish militaries organize a fake battle. A fake battle in which the U.S. would fight the Spanish in Manila, and the Spanish would intentionally lose. That is true. I actually learned that. I remember... I remember... back in school, I was the one that told them that it, it, the battle was fake because I saw it on YouTube. It was, I, don't, I don't remember what grade, but I remember my teacher told us about that. It was just a fun fact, but it's not really a fact because they said when the, the U.S. came to the Philippines um, and they fought Spain, Spain easily just easily got beaten. But I actually raised my hand and told them, told them oh, ma'am, the Philippines, I mean, it was a fake battle, ma'am. And they actually searched it up. Yes, they searched it up. 
And yeah, I was true. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where she got that it that it was true, but hey. And the climax of this whole theatrical battle, according to the plan, was that at the end, the US would storm towards the inner walled city of Manila, the last stronghold of where the Spanish are. Oh, and the key detail in this whole plan, they would not let the Filipino fighters, the ones that had been doing all the actual fighting against the Spanish, join them as they stormed towards the walled city to deal the final blows to the Spanish Empire. <laughs> and this would mean that the Filipinos technically didn't gain their independence. It was actually the US who conquered the Spanish. And then the Spanish were like, oh, can you give us $20 million for our troubles? And the US was like, yeah, sure. So now the US- <laughs> Like, hey, 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 Filipinos. No, 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 say, uh, say, man. We'll, we'll handle it, we'll handle it. Like, nah, nah, because we're gonna try to kill, we're not gonna try to, we're going to try to kill them. Because what if, what if, what if the US didn't just, like, go, 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 attack, attack them. Like, what if the Philippine really just killed them, right? The, the Spanish. What if they just killed them, knowing that this battle was fake? Yo, that would be West wins so the war, weird. And they claim sovereignty over the Philippines. So yeah, this happened. They did the fake battle. They won the war. And instead of liberating the Filipinos, they just say, hey, we're your new colonizers. <laughs> Psych. Meanwhile, Psych. back in the United States, they got to keep up this white savior liberation narrative that they created to justify going to war with Spain. Mm. So you see a lot more theatrical PR by the government. They staged this giant military parade in New York City where this military commander who did the fake war, George Dewey, marches down. They called it Dewey Day. It was like a two day parade in New York City. They created a big like military arch for him. He became like a military hero for having like liberated all these people from the Spanish. And then wow. you start to see these like crazy advertisements. Whoa. Like the soap advertisement that has George Dewey, the commander, washing his hands with the caption, quote, the first step towards lightening the white man's burden is through teaching the virtues of cleanliness. Wow. <laughs> Damn. And on the sides, you have soap being offloaded in the Philippines and being given to the locals. The U.S. had to frame this not as conquest, but as the honorable duty of the U.S to civilize these people, or in the words of the soap ad, quote, to brighten the dark corners of the earth. Jeez, this is insane and was not that long ago. Okay, so this is where things really heat up. It's 1900 now, Spain loses the war, obviously, and the US now owns Puerto Rico, Guam, and they claim the Philippines. But the local Filipinos who have been fighting for their freedom for years are like, no, 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 no. You just waltzed in here on our rebellion and conspired with the Spanish to make it look like you were liberating us. No, this is our country. We don't need another colonizer. Yeah, that is true. Um, I actually have like um, a photo of the, um, I forgot what it was, Emilia Ginaldo um, waving the Philippine flag. Um, yeah, they actually did that maybe after, I forgot what, when that happened, but hey, to be honest with you, they just like, you know what, I'll just take this to the Philippines. Imagine, wait, what if America just doesn't left the Philippines? What if America just stayed? Is the Philippines going to be America? <laughs> that's so weird to know because what if because you know United States knowing that what if we we're still part of America whoa that's so weird and this is where things really heat up ah the Philippine the Philippine American war understanding of what Darwin really meant when he said survival of the fittest I don't know much about the Philippine-American War, but I'll try to react to more, more videos about this, so yeah. The Filipinos start fighting again for their independence, and this time against the United States. It is a pretty horrible, bloody war. One oh yeah, the flag was after, was after this Philippine-American War, because 
I forgot. Because why the hell are they going to wave a flag if there's another colonizer there? So I yeah. learned about in school. It include massacres of men, women, and children by the United States and hundreds of thousands of civilian deaths. But the U.S. eventually won and they established a government in the Philippines. Back in the U.S., the appetite for expansion continued to go down and people sort of just forgot about the Philippines. They forgot that there was a war there. One newspaper summed it up by saying, Americans didn't know if the Philippines were islands or canned fruit. But the fact wow. remained that the U.S. went to war and now owned the Philippines in addition to Puerto Rico and Guam. So this begged a very important question, one that hadn't been asked before, which is, is all of this land America? Are these people Americans? This was a huge question. And the answer to that question affects how we see these territories still today. Okay, so a few years after these wars, there's a guy in New York City who's importing oranges from one of these territories, Puerto Rico. And he's paying tariffs on these imports because, you know, that's what you do when you're importing oranges from another country. Wait a minute, another country? This guy was like, didn't we conquer Puerto Rico and Guam and the Philippines? Isn't that America? The, the Constitution says that you can't put tariffs on stuff coming from other parts of the US. Like New Jersey can't put tariffs on like avocados from California. So he sued and his case and a bunch of others like it made it to the Supreme Court. So now the Supreme Court must decide, is this land where we just won a war, is this America? Are these- Yeah, whoa, I just realized. Why are they going why why is he going to pay tariffs if it's if it's American? Americans. If they are, do they get all the same rights as other Americans? Mm. Do they get to vote? Do they get to participate in the US economy without oh. tariffs? Like any other state does. And honestly, this isn't a question about oranges and tariffs. The real question at stake here is, is America the land of the free where all are created equal, or are we an empire? No different than any other empire that scoops up colonial possessions in war and rules the people, who are usually black and brown, as subjects. The British Empire. <laughs> the British Empire. Not fully a part of the country. That was the question that was at stake. And in this series of cases in the early 1900s, the Supreme Court decided that America was the latter, is the latter. They created a new category of land called unincorporated territories, Un where the people don't have any representation in the democracy, but where Congress could create laws on their own, particularly laws dealing with revenue, which would not be allowed by the Constitution for states within the Union. We can create revenue laws, stuff that's totally unconstitutional for other parts of our country. In other words, unincorporated territories are land we control and exploit for revenue, but whose people don't get to vote and don't get the right to trial by jury. So yeah, the Philippines, in addition to Puerto Rico and Guam, remained unincorporated territories, a place that the US could kind of just ignore without a lot of consequence. They weren't important enough or strategic enough to be considered to become states like Hawaii or Alaska. So they sort of faded from American consciousness. Like this is why we never heard about this in school. Like it didn't make it into the history books in any salient way. And how far the Philippines had faded from people's mind became very clear in December of 1941 during World War II. The US had owned the Philippines for like 40 years when a fleet of Japanese bombers flew across the Pacific and bombed an American naval base in Hawaii. Ah, Pearl Harbor. We learned that from kings and generals. If you want to watch that video, it's in the description down below. But what we don't really remember is on that day, Japan bombed Guam and the Philippines, two American territories, as well as several other American and British territories. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Here's the draft of this speech. This is the original draft that FDR spent the day marking up before he gave it. Zoom in a little bit and you'll see on this draft that it mentioned the Philippines originally, but FDR crossed it out. He crossed out the mention of Manila. Yes, the Philippines was on some map somewhere. Yes, we technically owned it. But the people really didn't want to hear about it because these people weren't Americans. 
The Supreme Court had decided that. They weren't going to become states anytime soon. So why mention them? After that day, Japan actually full-on invaded the Philippines. They didn't do that to Hawaii, but they did to the Philippines until the end of the war, at which point the Philippines were finally granted independence in 1946. Fast forward to today, and this we own you but you're not really Americans precedent established by the Supreme Court still applies to four million people who live in unincorporated territories. Or let's just call it a spade a spade, let's call them what they are. These are colonial possessions. The people who live here don't experience the full rule of law. They don't get trial by jury. They don't have full representation in our democracy. And they don't get to vote for the president. This is why when a hurricane hits Puerto Rico, the government response is not nearly what it should be. The way Trump talked about Puerto Rico as almost another country, as not a part of us, mirrors exactly how the Supreme Court talked about these unincorporated territories. They're for revenue, not to compete with American farmers. We conquered these places, but we didn't want to bring the people fully into the American project. We left them out. And there they remain today. Well then, folks, we're done. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. That is very interesting. That is very, very interesting. So yeah, maybe the next video is going to be um, part two of the Pacific War. And I'm actually try to react to some English Philippine-American wars video so if if you found a video that is english go send it to me in the comments down below so yeah thank you for watching everybody like and subscribe goodbye